She's awesome, um, as well as a few other um, graduate assistants and Dr. Nicole Canstrolo. Once again, um, Nick and I have mentioned the One Love program multiple times with you guys, but um, we really want to get some type of um, education surrounding sexual and um, healthy relationships on campus. So for those who are a little bit unaware of what the program is, it's, um, it's, a, it's a program where we have modules and um, Sorry, I like lost my train of thought. Um, One Love is a program that is there to educate students on healthy relationships, and it usually starts with athletics, but it really goes in and tries to help you identify red flags in relationships. Um, and with a lot of things that are coming up, um, student government thinks it'd be a really good idea to try and get some more education out there about what healthy relationships are, how to recognize red flags, and also tie mental health into that. So today we had a meeting um, to follow up, and we're thinking about getting some training on the program. So my idea was, um, with the program, trying to introduce it to the student body, it'd be really helpful if we started with student leaders. And, I mean, our representatives, most of you are involved in multiple different organizations, um, and I think it'd be great to get some of those other organizations, um, student leaders involved as well. So I could go on a tangent about what it is, but if you're interested in educating um, on sexual um, and healthy relationships and you want to be a part of that, just reach out to me because I'm really trying to find people that are passionate about it as well. Um, something else, um, our alumni career panel. So on March 2nd from 12 to 1, which I believe is next Tuesday, SGA is going to be doing a um, little alumni career panel following the career fair that's down in the chestnut room. 
Our career panel is going to be up in the Jones room from 12 to 1. We are going to be providing lunch for those who attend. Um, we will be giving you some more information later this week about it. But what we're doing is we're partnering with the Office of Career Exploration and Development, as well as the alumni office, to try and get some alumni to come back to YSU and um, come talk to students about their experience while in college and what it took to look for a career, get, get an internship, and talk about professional development as well. We're still working through some logistics of that um, in, the, in the next coming week, so we will keep you updated on anything. However, um, with the attendance, that will count as your representative hours, so I'll be reaching out to you with more information. Um, next on our list, AntFlow, the most exciting thing that we have accomplished this year, and definitely my favorite. Um, we are getting expansion to the library. So Nick and I had a meeting with John Hyden, Aaron, um, and Joy last week to talk about expanding to the library. And um, John, John Hyden was all for it, which is great. So we're just going to go ahead and work through some logistics and try purchasing more dispensers as well as more materials. Um, on top of that, I'm going to reach out to the company. We have a contact with a representative and try to see what we can do to get more merch for AntFlow on campus. And on top of that, see if they do any type of sponsorship so that we can get more dispensers and more supplies for a lower price. Um, next, plaques are finished. Thank God. I'm so excited about that. If you walk through your college and you got your headshot, you will see your face looking as beautiful as you all are with your name, your contact info, and they look phenomenal on the walls. I'm super excited that we finally got those finished. So go ahead and... Go walk through your college, look at your face, and be proud of yourself for being up there because I'm super proud to have it finished and to have you all here. Are you guys laughing at me? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I heard you guys laughing at me. I heard you guys laughing. I was like, I stop. Um, so, yeah, super exciting. If you have yet to get your headshot, um, please do so. And when you do, just let me know. And I will hopefully have you up in there in the next few weeks. The last thing I want to mention is on the bottom of the list, um, discussing and meeting with the new dean of WCBA. So Insha brought up um, an issue regarding her master's in accounting program. And um, Nick and I have yet to meet with the new dean of WCBA. So we are planning on meeting with her and talking to her about this program. And on top of that, talking about the internal tax volunteer program. All right. And then so a couple of things we're working on, too, is uh, we're working on Blackboard adoption, so basically John and I had a meeting with Jim Yukich, and for those of you that don't know, about three years ago, um, the president and vice president of student government, one of their initiatives was to get 100% Blackboard adoption from professors, so that way every single student has their grades on Blackboard, um, they all know what they're getting, they, they know exactly what they got on their tests and their final grades, and that's great. Um, unfortunately, it took a pandemic for most of these professors to start using Blackboard, um, but they eventually did get there. Um, but we're now we're kind of revisiting Blackboard adoption uh, and trying to see if we can get 100% professors on it. There's, it's a bit more complicated than just trying to get professors to put grades on there because there's also um, different statistics with Blackboard, such as how many professors are putting their syllabus on Blackboard, how many professors are putting their grades on there, how many professors are putting their final calculated grades on there. Um, as well as the introduction to Blackboard Ultra. So now you have professors using Blackboard Ultra versus Blackboard Learn. So we're going to be going through all that. But um, if you guys have any classes where a professor like doesn't use Blackboard and you feel like it would benefit you um, better if, if they did, you know, like let us know. Tell us your story. That's all stuff we can, you know, kind of relay them. The more, um, I guess the more like real world kind of examples that we have um, in trying to push this the better. So if you want to let us know and tell us your story, tell us how much easier class may, may would, like, would be if you had this stuff on Blackboard. Uh, or if you really love a class that puts everything on Blackboard, tell us that too so you can know how easy it really is. Um, so there's that. Um, so getting in contact with Dining Services about programming. So um, we had a lot of I know on Teams we had the idea of doing the um, food truck idea, trying to do maybe like putting a food truck on Lincoln Avenue two to four times in the month of April. Um, so I reached out to Tom Tyredale and basically said like, hey, this would be a great experience and a great learning experience for dining in the sense of we can bring a food truck on campus, um, market it, see how much students really like that. And that way, dining services can also kind of study 
what types of foods do students like, what types of foods would they, they be excited for. So kind of in the future when Dining Services is trying to bring new stuff on campus, they know what's going to, you know, what's actually going to be exciting for students. Um, so he just reached back out to me. Uh, they also want to do some independent programming themselves and, and work with student government. So he just got back with me. We're going to be setting up a meeting and we're going to kind of like iron out some details and see what, what could help um, with Dining Services and also kind of bring some fun stuff for students to eat. So. Uh, and then the little update on the internal tax volunteer program that the WCBA does. So I reached out to Dr. Ray Schaefer, who's the head of that program. Um, hasn't gotten back to me yet. Main thing I really wanted to know if we could use Dr. Schaefer's information as contact information for when we do kind of market this program. But John and I just had a meeting um, where Joy told us that they posted um, information about it already so we can kind of take that information and use it for marketing so that's something that student government is going to be doing soon is just kind of like relaying information out to the student body so um, let your friends know let student organizations that you're a part of um, just kind of know like hey if there's anybody who really needs to get their taxes done and wants to do it for free WCBA has that um, volunteer for students to do that so um, and then a couple of things that we found out today that I want to talk about so the Snack and Chill, which is the um, snack place in the Cove, that is that now has an official opening date. That's going to be March 17th at 11 a.m. is when they're going to do the ribbon cutting and the official opening date for that. So March 17th, 11 a.m. So I'm, you know, really, I, I'm, I'm going to be there. Uh, I'm going to get some ice cream. I'm going to get some snacks. So really hope everybody in student government kind of shows up for that. Um, they, uh, we were also told that. Um, as time goes on, they're going to be adding more and more snacks and more options and stuff too. So they're going to be constantly kind of improving that snack shop. But I think that'd be really cool. Uh, the Cove is already a place where students like to relax at. So it's nice to have a little snack store there. Um, also, something else. Uh, so midnight breakfast uh, that took place it was really awesome. We, uh, I guess, over 300 students went to midnight breakfast. Um, and the next one is also going to be on March 17th. And so they're really hoping to get more and more students to kind of keep breaking that number more and more. So um, they're also is that midnight or late, late night? Late nights. Yeah, sorry. Late night. My bad. Late night uh, at the dining hall. But yeah, over 300 students showed up to that. So they're going to be doing another one on March 17th. And then uh, there's going to be another one in April, but the April date hasn't been confirmed yet. But yeah, so same thing. It's all show out on March 17th to late night. Um, it was really cool. I went there, loved it, ate good food. Um, but that is pretty much everything that I have. So, um, Dom, you're up. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so, so far, we've appropriated uh, almost seventy-eight thousand dollars from the general fund. A little over five thousand has been returned. Today, we're proposing uh, a little bit over nine thousand. Um, so if everything passes, we'll have used $81,848.74 from the general fund. So that'll leave us with $47,592.26. Uh, today we are back with the new student award fund. Uh, we're proposing $166. So we'll have used $546 from there. Uh, and we'll have $3,454 remaining. And then our total appropriations budget will be a little bit over $51,000. And that is it. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so at my committee meeting this past week, uh, we were talking about plans for the spring semester with promotion because, as you guys all heard, Nick was talking a lot about stuff that the PR committee is going to be promoting coming up. And we also got two new members. So that led me to think that it was time to bring back the position of social media coordinator on PR. And Emmy here has been awarded that position. So everybody. So whenever you see something on the story now, I don't know if this will make you more inclined to share our stuff. It'll be Emmy posting it, not me. So just pay attention to everything that will be on there. And I just wanted to remind everyone that our press event which isn't really like an event, I guess it's more of like a get together at Crest and hang out with SGA, is gonna be on Wednesday from five to six. So if you can come, even if it's just for a little bit, we'd really appreciate it. It's just a chance for all of us to kind of hang out, get to know each other a little bit better. 
Um, we also have the career fair coming up, as Nick mentioned, and there will be an SGA event after. Since this is kind of short notice that we're planning this event, it's going to be really important that we're going to have to rely on you guys to help us promote this, which means posting on your own social channels, telling your friends, telling people in your classes about this event after, just doing the best you can to spread this event uh, by word of mouth. And also, if you are a new rep, because I know there are still a few of you guys here that are new, please follow our social medias and remember to like and share all of our posts. In addition, I'm going to ask you guys to start sharing stuff on the YSU app. It seems like a lot of people really use that as an outlet to learn more about YSU. So if you don't have the YSU app downloaded yet, try and download it and watch the um, posts on there and share stuff that student government posts as well. And that's all for me. All right. Michael? All right, thanks, Nick. Um, so first off, academic advising focus groups are finalized and full go. Everything went out last week. Um, currently, STEM is the only full um, session, which I think is no surprise. Our STEM students are very um, involved. And so um, one thing that I would like to, that I would ask each of you is if you are in, a, in, in your specific college, whenever Faith posts the social media graphics, which we are coordinating right now, if you can share them to your personal accounts, that way you can kind of get your constituents involved and just kind of getting that ball rolling. Um, we did, Angie and I did have a meeting with IPO to discuss international students and food insecurity, which went very well. Um, IPO is very interested in pursuing some opportunities with um, specific food options that we can include at the pantry. Um, as well as different air, or different um, markets around the area that have culturally specific foods or foods to dietary restrictions, um, as well as possible RTA um, bus routes being um, included in a new initiative. Um, as well as that, um, dining services, um, if you don't know, I do work at the campus Chick-fil-A now as well, and so I'm kind of involved in that dining service aspect. Um, but Chick-fil-A and Chartwells um, last week did a pay it forward um, program where you could purchase a meal voucher for a student who could not afford a meal, um, which I thought was very kind of them to do that program. And so it kind of stirred the conversation with my supervisor regarding what SGA and dining services could do to help combat food insecurity. Um, so we'll be, I will be meeting with um, dining services to kind of discuss different aspects of what they would like to include within SGA and um, dying services regarding that topic of food insecurity. Um, fifth year anniversary planning for the Penguin Pantry has begun and more details will be coming soon along with the events and programming um, calendar. Um, one thing that I wanted to discuss since Nick and Gianna kind of touched on it was Blackboard. Um, we're kind of looking at now when we get a little bit more information regarding Blackboard about a possible survey to go out to the student body regarding their experience with Blackboard with their back, with their professors and that kind of nature and kind of gauging how they feel Blackboard is being utilized within their courses at YSU. Um, and then as always, if anything um, that you would like to bring up to the Assessment Enrichment Committee, we would be happy to hear it. Just shoot me a quick email or another member of the Assessment Enrichment Committee and we'll be happy to help out with that. Elsa? I love how my agenda is always like the longest one, like my request is the longest one, but it's because we're always doing fun things. So, update on our love week and our tabling and everything from last week. Thank you to everyone who tabled. I really appreciate it. Monday, we raised $222, so that's amazing. Good night, everyone. So, I'm going to over to Erin, so she'll make the donation on behalf of SGA, just so that no one thinks I pocketed the money. I have it all screenshotted too, but <laughs> don't worry, guys. Okay, <clears throat> so that was wonderful. Moving on to elections. So the form, the declaration of candidacy form, was due last Thursday. If you guys are planning to run, hopefully you submitted that. If you didn't, I am so sorry. But there are mandatory elections rules meeting that you have to attend at least one this week. So there's one on Thursday and there's one on Friday. If you do not come to the meeting, you are not allowed to run. It's mandatory. <laughs> And it's virtual, so it's really easy. You can just like show up, please. Okay, campaigning again begins March 14th. You're not allowed to campaign any time beforehand because then you will get in trouble and I'll have to deal with that. Drag queen. Again, still trying to work on securing a different drag queen. That is up in the air. I'll let you guys know. Hot Cocoa Kids, we're getting approved for funding in probably 10 minutes. So please vote yes for <laughs> So it's, it's only $35. 
It's our thirty five can make a difference. It's our cheapest <laughs> event, so I'm, I will create a sign up for that and send it out too. And if you guys have already tabled for something for me before, let someone else table for it so that everyone can get rough hours. These are just like easy rough hours, so you can just be like, "Hey, here's hot cocoa," and that's really nice. Um, so definitely vote yes for that. And then the wellness retreat. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so the wellness retreat. We have a new layout for it, courtesy of Abby. So we're thinking of doing like a little speaker call. Like so we're gonna have counseling services come in on Monday and talk to like just the body and everyone about like wellness and like just or that be like emotional wellness, physical wellness. And then Tuesday, hopefully it'll be warm because it's March, right? So it'll be warm. It might be a little rainy. So if it rains, <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little cold. Let's go. <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to paint the rock with things that we're grateful for. So you can basically just spray paint a rock for fun. And then on Wednesday, we're going to have like our wellness station. So that'll be in the residence room or the actually most likely the Ohio room, the Rossi room now. And then it'll be little stations of like different parts of campus coming in. And it'll be like, we can have counseling services and they'll work on like a breathing exercise with us. And you can just kind of stop in and go at any time. That'll be really fun. Rough hours for if you come for that too. So I'm really just giving us free rough hours again. Um, one last thing. <laughs> one last thing is that Jordan is leading a voter registration initiative. So we will get that planned out and ready to go too. Okay. So first, I want to say welcome to Zachariah. He's our new WCBA rep. WCBA spots have been filled now, which is exciting. We just have one spot for CCCA, one spot for um, BCHHS, and one or three graduate spots. So spread the word if you have any friends in these colleges. The, the applications are still open, so we're still accepting them. Just spread the word if you know anybody. Uh, rep hours. So I've entered all the ones that you guys have submitted so far through the form on Teams. So they're all updated. And I plan on sending out an update to all of you before spring break, um, just to know where you're at and how many you need to have left um, for after spring break. And if you have any questions or concerns with the rough hours or with anything, business cards, name tags, anything, just let me know, reach out to me. So during our retreat, I briefly went over just like, a little bit of a crash course for Robert's rules, and I meant to get this to you last week, but I completely forgot. So this is just a Robert's rules cheat sheet for everybody to hold on to. I highly suggest you keep it with you whenever you come to meetings, especially for newer reps. If Robert's rules or it's somewhat new to you, this is just something simple that you can look down at. Um, Again, it's just the purpose, the order of business, and then something that we're all used to, the motions, but we don't necessarily understand why we do it or what they are. So there are brief explanations of each of those down there. And then there are points on the next side. Um, so technically, whenever you're going to leave the room, you should motion for a point of personal privilege and then Nick would have to dismiss you but again this is just th that's the formal version of Robert's rules we're not going as formal but there are just little things that uh, I'd like you to know about so if we have any questions on that feel free to ask or email me I'd be more than happy to answer and so Nick sent out the amendment with the uh, with the agenda last week, and hopefully everyone was able to look that over a little bit. So when we get into voting on it into new business later on, we can have some questions and good discussion about it because not everything should be passing unanimously because it, it doesn't look great. And um, any other ideas that anyone has regarding the bylaws, regarding the amendments, or constitution, or standing rules, feel free to reach out and we can work together to come up with some sort of solution. Right. And seeing that we have no unfinished business, 
I look favorably upon a motion to move into new business. New business. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we're going to start with item A, SBS 2022-14. Section 1. YC Chapter of Future Medical Laboratory Scientists is appropriated the sum of $156 from the new student org earmark to defray the cost of org t-shirts to help promote their club. And they submitted a statement. Most of you have probably never heard of the medical laboratory sciences. Well, it supports approximately 70% of medical diagnosis Automation is given more credit than those who obtain education in the field. The FMLS aims to shed light on the lab sciences as a career path and as an important role in the medical field. It also stands to support the existing students who wish to enter the field. We ask the SBA for funding to purchase promotional t-shirts with a design created for and by the students of the FMLS. This would serve to unify the existing group as well as an aid in promoting recognition of a student formed and directed group that aims to change the field. Thank you, Alicia Wheeler. Section two, the YC Dance Ensemble is appropriated the sum of $915 for their American College Dance Association event. Section three, the Flute Society is appropriated $2,525 uh, for their 27th annual flute festival event. Section four, the American Society of Civil Engineers is appropriated the sum of $4,003 um, for their 2022 ASC Region 3 Student Symposium. And they also submitted a statement. The YC student chapter of the American Society of Civil Engineers is requesting funding for student members to attend the regional steel bridge and concrete canoe competitions at the end of March as a reward for their hard work on these projects over the last year. We're all looking forward to expanding our professional networks and positively representing the university's engineering department while traveling with friends. So we'd appreciate any help that you're able to give. Thank you for your consideration, Matthew Hone. Section 5, Sigma Alpha Epsilon is appropriated the sum of $1,085 for their grilled cheese with the SAEs event. Section 6, Planned Parenthood Generation Action YSU is appropriated the sum of $276 for their Pink Out the Vote event. They uh, submitted a statement. The Planned Parenthood Generation Action Club is excited to hold an informative luncheon to educate the YSU community on voting. The funding provided by the SGA would go towards the catering of this event. We will have speakers from our YCU Political Science and Gender Studies Department and from other student organizations on campus. Thank you so much for all your support. Section 7, uh, student government is, is, is appropriated $35 uh, for their hot cocoa kits event. Section 8, Residential Housing Association is appropriated $500 for their get together event. Section 9, Pan Hellenic Council, geez, oh man, is appropriate the sum of $750 for their Pan Health Pride Bingo event. Great. At this time, I look favorably upon a motion to previous question. Motion to previous question. Second. Awesome. So, all right, all those in favor, please raise your placards. <laughs> Uh, if you're on student mic, you should not be voting right now. <laughs> I appreciate it though. We're getting our money. Yeah, we're trying to turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm voting specifically. Can you guys hold them back up, whoever's voting? Section 7. Section 7. We some discussion on that. I think we need some discussion on Section 7. Anybody opposed? You can raise your questions. Nobody opposed online? Okay. Any abstentions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Constitutional Amendment, as you mentioned earlier. 
So a pretty common theme in our Constitution is that it explains we need to do something, but it doesn't explain how or give us any form of solvency and how to achieve it. So this is just another one of those amendments that are just kind of logistical. Um, we don't know, or we don't have currently have a way to resign, which as silly as that sounds, we kind of need a way to resign formally. So because that is not existent in the Constitution presently, that is why Article 11 is being introduced in front of you today. So I'm going to read it off briefly, and then I'm going to open the floor up to discussion. So if a representative, academic senator, or member of the executive committee cannot uphold the aforementioned responsibilities outlined in the Constitution, bylaws, and standing rules, and or face an impeachment outlined in Article 10 of the Constitution, which is right above this one, they maintain the option to formally resign. The resignation shall include the resignee's name, position within the organization, and detailed purpose for resigning. The resignation shall be sent to the president, executive vice president, chief of staff, and the respective committee's vice president, if applicable, via letter or email. If this process is not followed, the delinquent member shall face a formal impeachment as outlined in Article 10 of the Constitution. Resignation shall no longer be accepted by the executive committee within 48 hours of the scheduled impeachment hearing. Therefore, resignations must be sent prior to this 48-hour threshold or the trial shall proceed. So I'm going to motion to open the floor up for a four-minute discussion. Anybody have anything to say on the amendment? How, but Galena, I was able to resign. So how do we currently resign from SGA, and how is this different? Uh, you wing it currently. There is no formal way to resign in our any of our governing documents. So it's like again, it's just one of those little things that aren't it's not mentioned anywhere in any of our governing documents. So this is just serving as a formality from this point on in a process that you would have to follow to do it. I mean, um, yeah, when you say like what the resignation shall include, um, I know this probably isn't important, but uh, is that by email or is that by like physical copy? Yeah, so it just says if I go via letter, via letter or email. Now you're you're good. For um, representatives that do resign for later in the semester, how will? Because I know there are a lot of things with SGA about having been like a full member of it, like coming to graduation later on in our university careers. How does that apply to them? Like, let's say, like, what if somebody were to resign later in the semester, having done nothing with SGA, but technically not having been delinquent otherwise? So what? Could you, could you go into a little bit more detail? I'm trying to fully understand. So, like, we have requirements to be representatives. Mm -hmm. What if they didn't meet any of those requirements and then they just decided to resign at the end? Would they still, would it have been like a resignation for them or would there be anything different? Because for, I know there are a lot of things with SGA that have to do with, you know, if you're here and if you, with like our courts, it's if you were in good standing with SGA. Would so, they still be considered good standing if they didn't have their represent hours, but like resigned later so in the you're semester? Talking just about the hours specifically, like representative not hours? Not necessarily just those, but I know those are the one thing that you kind of get away with not doing, then resign later without having technically being removed. So with representative hours, that's a whole nother whole nother thing that we have to that I like have to look towards and address. Like whether we're working on incentivization with representative hours, but no, with specifically representative hours, they're not going to hold you delinquent because they're not against anything in our governing documents at the moment. So you would still be in good standing technically if you didn't complete them. Okay. But that will be changed eventually. Okay. <laughs> um, would the resignation process look different for somebody on exec? Like specifically the president and the vice president, since the letter has to be submitted to them. Yeah, so there is, or I believe there is a way for, um, there's a whole line of succession for like presidents and vice presidents when they go to resign or they're impeached or something like that. 
but something for general senators, for the general members here, and other members of exec, it's not accounted for. Um, so, am I correct in saying that there are certain members of exec that are elected by the by the body? Yes, yes. there are three that are elected. Okay. So, if one of those members were to resign, does that mean like they fall back as like a representative, or would they resign from the body? So, um, I guess you would think it would be either. I don't know why I answered this. We need to have you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, technically, if I were to resign, um, then the floor would be opened up for election. So the last amendment we passed a few weeks ago, that kind of goes hand in hand with replacing positions. So if I were to um, resign, then Nick and Gianna would have basically three weeks to open it up to everybody else, and then they would run mini campaigns, and then you would be able to run that way. And, and, if, a, and if a VP were to resign within those three weeks, the chair would just assume the VP position for those three weeks until somebody takes that spot. Of course, unless the chair runs and they win, then obviously that wouldn't change. But right. But I'm saying, like, if Nico, you resign, do you like become a representative again, or are you you removed from student government? No, I'm done. Completely done. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure, like, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just as far as like graduation, you complete your full term. Um, there's no need to re resignation at all. No, your term completes at the end. But how would that work for, would that be the same thing for someone that graduated um, halfway through the academic year or couldn't fulfill their duty in the spring? Yeah. So, the fall? so you would still need to, so say um, you graduate in the fall, is that what you're saying? If you were to graduate in the fall, you would still need to resign because technically the terms that we have are fall semester to the end of spring semester, it's a full year. Um, and we don't do like half, like we don't, you don't run an election just to be a half term. Even if you plan on staying for one semester, you still run an election for the full year. So you will still need to resign. Right. However, if you do complete those rep hours, as um, I forget who asked, I think that was Corey that asked that. If you do complete those rep hours, it's still the same thing. It's just you have to formally resign because you're not completing your full term. So I, we, we went a bit over. So I'm going to motion to extend this another four minutes. <clears throat> and um, to the previous question um, that he had brought up, so is there currently a process to say, like, if I were to be on an elected position in exec, but I can't fulfill those duties, but I want to remain as a representative, is that a possibility? Because you said if you resign, you're just done. But what if you just want to resign those that leadership ability, but remain as a representative on SGA? So I would say that uh, I was a WCBA student, and the WCBA um, college representative spots are full. Um, like, that's kind of the reason why that procedure doesn't exactly exist, because you, you could run into a situation where those spots are full, and it's like, I can't just take somebody's spot, um, because those are already elected or appointed officials. Um, and I was elected and appointed in this position, like not in right. your position. Um, yes. The difficulty in the gray area of that is that you have to get elected as a representative before you get elected into those positions. So then why, why once you resign, can you not go back to that representative? I understand like if they're full, but if you have to be elected as a representative first, why can't I just resign that extra responsibility? Let's say if I have to do clinical hours or I have to pick something else up. Why can't I just, what, like, they just have to leave yeah. SGA in essence, which I think should probably look a little bit more into. I would say the, the executive committee is kind of looked at as a um, different entity than just, like, the representatives in the sense of you, when you are on exec, um, you know, that is your position. Uh, even if the body, even if you had to become a representative first and then get elected by student government body, you become kind of part of that different entity to where if you were to drop out, like you kind of gave up, you almost gave up like your rep seat to be on exec. And, so. and also Tim, so like myself, Hallie and Dom, we are not reps first. Like, I mean, Hallie was literally appointed, she wasn't even in student government. So we can't really go back to being reps 
because we weren't, like, I was a rep, but you don't have to be a rep. You know what I mean? So I guess that's where it differs. So that well. would be a situation for three positions in student government total. Right, and that's that's what my question was. I, I, I knew the, the difference in the, the positions there, but I was asking specifically for those. And it, it makes, like, if you, if you rescind your representative seat to claim that position, if you're not double filling, then that makes sense. So, yep. um, so uh, my question is, I'm just asking for clarification on not representative positions, but uh, positions held within committees, like the chairs, uh, the social media coordinator. Um, obviously, they don't need to be impeached to be removed from those positions, but is this applicable to their positions? And if so, not, this is going to be another one of those lovely gray areas that our Constitution doesn't address. But no, that would that's all at the chair's discretion. That that is all at the um, or well, the VP of that committee. All of their uh, it, it's all their discretion with that kind of thing. Now, I, I do have amendments in the works currently addressing the certain responsibilities of the chairs and committees and just the specifics of getting removed or stepping down or things like that. But again, that's just one of those gray areas that the Constitution doesn't account for right now. Uh, I, I think I'd be, and Nika, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'd be right in saying that this amendment really just accounts for your, your status as a a part of the student government association body in general um so that's what that's what like you would need to follow this for is saying i'm completely like leaving just sga i want to let you guys know you all have great questions and all of your questions are the reason that nico is doing all this because as you can see there are many 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 gray areas and gaps in our constitution so everything's just one step at a time so hearing you guys out i mean helps all of us make sure that we're doing it the right way um, Hallie, are there any questions at all online? I didn't. No questions. Not, there, none in the chat. Are there any? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, completely different question. Uh, who do academic senators uh, resign to? The vice president? Okay. Well, with this article now, it would go to the president, vice president, and chief of staff, so all of them would be aware no. of a senator resigning. All right. Any other questions? All right. At this time, I look favorably, favorably upon a motion to previous question. Previous question. Second. All right. Uh, at this time, if you are for uh, this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Abstentions. Straight to advisors' remarks. So, Aaron, you start us off. I just wanted to uh, put out a reminder that our awards deadline for our annual student awards banquet is next Friday, March 4th, so right before you guys head out for spring break. Uh, there are several scholarships that are available, um, as well as student organization and individual awards. So, um, if you haven't taken a look at that yet, I encourage you to do so. If anyone needs reference letters, any assistance with that, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help you if you're interested in applying for any of those. Um, also, we are in the process of selecting some of our uh, student leader uh, development groups for next year. So the Emerging Leader Program, which is for sophomore students. Um, and then I also oversee the presidential mentor team that meets monthly with President Tressel. So if you have interest in either of those, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I can give you some more details. Um, the Emerging Leader Program is a nomination process. 
Um, and then presidential mentors, it can be either nomination or students can apply themselves for that. So um, please feel free to reach out to me about either of those if you're interested. Um, is Dr. Kaufman online? I don't believe so. Okay. I also just wanted to give you guys a heads up that there's going to be two different uh, campus-wide assessments that are going to be happening after spring break. One is the Noel Levitz assessment, and so that is basically asking you what's most important to you as students, and then how does the university do at meeting those different areas of importance to you. Um, and then there's also the National Collegiate Health Assessment, and so how is everybody doing? What can we do to support your health, physical, mental health? What kind of habits, what do you need from us to help you have a good experience and be successful as people and as students? So just wanted to give you a heads up. That will go out to all students on campus, and we appreciate any support that you can offer in encouraging other students to take both of those assessments. Um, there's also some great incentives involved. Um, through Noel Levis, there's a variety of Amazon gift cards and whatnot. And then uh, with the Collegiate Health Assessment, um, I think they're doing like AirPods and uh, some other cool stuff with that as well. So. Um, as I get more information, I'll post that in Teams for you. Um, we appreciate your help with that. And have a great spring break. We'll be moving on to members' remarks slash announcements. So we'll start with Tom and go around the room. Yeah, I know um, next week, there, I believe everyone in SGA got the, the sign up for the ice cream place. Um, uh, yeah, but we'll check your emails because you might have. Because um, I saw some of you signed up for it, so I believe everyone did. Um, but uh, next week, I think maybe all next week possibly. Yeah. It's uh, Wednesday through something. Friday, I think. Yeah. Take a look at your emails. Yeah, it's a little like taste test like that um, ice cream place in the Cove. Um, I'm super excited to try it out. Uh, it's like Hershey ice cream and stuff. So, um, yeah, check your emails. Maybe you want to sign up for that. Um, but besides that, thank you guys for just, like the hard work you've been doing. Um, hope you guys have a good rest of your week. And yeah, I actually had um, I had Chick Fil A sign up. I had Chick Fil A for lunch, and I had the brisk iced tea. Was it good? It, it kind of did something to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this whole meeting, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but uh, I just want to leave you guys know in case you get like bread okay. and Chick Fil A. So. Yeah, just 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 kind of be careful. If you're just caution, I guess. Um, don't drink the tea. Just don't drink the tea. I've been feeling kind of warm and fuzzy all week. So. All right, go ahead, Michael. Um, I can't attest that we do anything special with the tea, um, but get the sweet tea instead. Yeah. But um, I like to feed it back off of Dom. You guys are doing a fabulous job this um, semester and this whole year. I would just like you to keep on pushing through. We're getting to kind of that nitty gritty time in the semester um, where it's starting to get a little bit more stressful, but you guys are persevering and pushing through. And so I just want to give you some kudos on that. Um, as well as specifically to the AE committee, you guys have been kicking butt this semester and it is really paying off. I could not do my job without the commitment and dedication of the AE committee. Um, and so I just want to thank you guys for that. Um, as well as keep your eyes open because Elsa and I are working on bringing back a past initiative, but more details on that are to come in the future. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yes, again, obviously you guys know that I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. Obviously my student life committee, you guys own my heart, love you guys. But um, yes, a lot of events are coming up within SGA, so please talk about it, spread the word, come, you get rep hours. I'm basically giving you guys rep hours. Also, I forgot to talk about the volunteering stuff that we wanted to do. Because uh, I can't ask, so yeah, sorry. Meeting's over. But reach out to me if you have any like ideas about like where you want to volunteer. I have said one more thing. Mm, I forgot. But uh, sorry, have a great rest of your week. You? Sorry. Uh, I have uh, three things. Uh, one, I was wondering for the meetings this Thursday and Friday, will we just receive a link in the email? Yes, or? I'm sending that out. Actually, Samantha will be sent through the shaper. So keep an eye out for me. An email from her. And then if you are in the Honors College, uh, look in this past week's weekly fill and please buy tickets to the Honors Formal. It's going to be a super fun time. And then also this weekend, uh, on Friday and Saturday at 7.30, uh, we're having 
uh, YSU's production of Music Man in Bliss Hall over there, and then at 2 p.m. on sun Sunday. Yeah, uh, I am in it. I'm playing the mayor, so please come and show your support. It'll be a ton of fun. Have a great week. Um, have a great week. <laughs> That's what I'm a uh, YSU soccer team is going to organize a fundraiser. Uh, we will need some volunteers, and if you have any fundraising uh, ideas, like feel free to reach out to us. I'm a treasury manager there, so feel free to reach out to me. Uh, have a great week. Um, I'm excited for our upcoming student life events. If you guys are able to come, come and support. Yeah, enjoy your week. Uh, enjoy this warm weather while it lasts. It's going to snow on Wednesday. And thanks for bringing the room. Okay, well, um, he didn't need to say that. Uh, you ruined my mood, but everyone have a good rest of your week. Um, so I would like to first say thanks to SGA for, like, getting um, the funding for my event. That was last Saturday, like, this past Saturday. It went well. So thank you guys. But other than that, have a great rest of your week. And... Uh, don't listen to what Jake said. There will never be said. <laughs> uh, nothing for me. Have a good week. Enjoy the sun. And if you like the snow, enjoy the snow when it happens. <laughs> okay. It was kind of odd. Uh, so, a couple of things. First off, congrats again to Emmy on social media coordinator. Uh, and then also, uh, I'm working this week with Michael and Abby on the. Uh, Penguin Pantry video, might need a few extras for that, so keep an eye on your email. Uh, the press event on Wednesday, I will be there taking pictures, like, with the actual camera, so try and dress a little bit nice for that, because it'll probably be on Instagram. Uh, and then last thing is, this Saturday, a good friend of mine, they are the president of the African Student Union, and if their African wedding night is a huge thing going on this weekend, definitely sign up for that and be there. And have a great week. I'm not going to be as long-winded as Jeremy there. Uh, have a great week. Go Penguins. Have a great week. Uh, two things. At 7.30, right downstairs in the Chestnut Room, we have a jazz ensemble concert with the Contemporary Ensemble also. It's free. Come check it out. And then it was already mentioned, but Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the theater department and the Dana School of Music are putting on the concert version of The Music Man. Um, Friday, Saturday at 7.30, Sunday at 2. If you like the music from the show but are bored with all the dialogue, the concert version is great for you. Student tickets are free, so you can check it out. We would love to see you there. <laughs> Listen to what Kyle said and come to all our events over in Cliff. Have a wonderful week, guys. I hope everyone has a good week. Yeah, just everybody have a good week. Go Gwen. Yeah, I hope everyone enjoys the warm weather, I guess, while it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> have a good week, everyone. Thanks for all the support on the new facility. Have a good week. Have a fantastic week. Have a good week. Hi, everyone. It is so good to see you guys all again. Um, <laughs> I haven't been here for a few weeks. Um, I didn't want to come back home to snow, um, but unfortunately I had to. And my flight got canceled, so I was actually stuck in Miami for almost a whole day. I almost got stuck there for a I just want to remind everyone to please, please, please come to our press event. It's Wednesday, right? Yeah. Okay, on Wednesday. The 23rd. I hopefully will be there if I don't forget when it is again. Um, it'll be really good to see all you guys. And like Jeremy said, he will be taking pictures. So if you want to be featured on our Instagram, uh, you should come. And I hope everyone has a fantastic week. Good luck next two weeks. Finish up and uh, load up on spring break. Have a good Wednesday. Yeah, have a great week. Have a pleasant week. All right, guys, the only thing I have for you is I've been working with the people down at the Veterans Center. We're getting the Armed Forces Student Association spun back up. So that's open to pretty much anybody. So if you guys have an interest in helping out with the veteran community on campus, that's open to you. The, uh, the first meeting will be this Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. at the Veterans Center. So the Veterans Center is right on Wick on the other side of the President's House. So... Yeah, so if you have any interest in that, that's open to you. Other than that, have a great week. I think I speak on behalf of all of exec. We do notice all the hard work everybody's putting in, all of the dedication and all of the passion you have towards not only this association that you're in, but 
um, changing YSU as a whole. So it really does not go unnoticed, and we do pick up on those things. So on behalf of all of us, thank you, and nice job. Keep up the good work, and have a good week. Uh, so I wanted to shout out everyone who tabled at our events last week. They all went super well, and even though we had like a little bit of a mix-up, like getting the speaker and everything like that, those of you guys who worked the events did a really good job, especially Jordan, who sat there the entire time for both days of tabling last week. I just wanted to give a specific shout out to her. It was a lot of fun, and I had fun sitting there with you guys. Again, I just wanted to bring up and make sure you try your best to come to the press event, even if it's only for like 15 or 20 minutes. Um, it'll be really fun, and I think it's a good way to hang out with everyone. Also, I checked the weather, and it's little to no accumulation for that snow, so <laughs> don't worry too much. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> you guys are really killing it with the rep hours. I see a lot of you have, like, like eight or ten at this point, which is awesome. Uh, so just keep up the good work, and um, two weeks till spring break, so... Keep that in your mind. I feel like everything that I have heard, like all of you say, I'm like, oh, I want to say that. Oh, I want to say that. So, like, just echoing what everyone else has said. Um, Jake's really getting attacked over there. And honestly, like, you can take, you're going to take a hit from me, too. You shouldn't have said that. But, but um, back to more important things. Um, for new reps, before I forget this, your business cards are up here. Um, so you could come get them after the meeting. Um, once again, echoing what everyone else has said, thank you guys. You are phenomenal. You've done such a great job this year as representatives. And on top of that, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all these different events that are going on that you guys are all talking about. And I just think that's awesome. I love that you're bringing that to us and trying to get more people involved with things you're passionate about on the side. So thank you. You guys are awesome. Um, on top of that, spring break. Oh, no, 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 no. Cassidy, I'm really trying to, I'm really... I'm really, I'm really hoping to get stuck in Miami too in the next few months. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm trying to get stuck there, and yeah. But um, by the time, by the time spring break is over, campaigning will begin. So for those representatives who are running, good luck, and I'm super excited for the selection season. So thank you for having great um, next three weeks. Great next three weeks, I think. Diana. Just um, it just says thank you, VP and Vice President for, and President for working on the proposed accounting STEM issue. <laughs> Everyone else is having a great time with, with the beautiful other. Oh, yes. let me try to find those things. Somebody online that had anything to say? Fingers. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that if, uh, if you're not busy after this, we're going to be having our first meeting of the year for Turning Point USA. We're going to be having free pizza there. Uh, it's over in Kushwa on the third floor. So if you want to swing by, feel free. Um, we'll probably start in about like 20 minutes. So if anybody wants to go, you know, drop by. Awesome. Thanks, Austin. Anybody else online? Yeah. Oh, All right. So, yeah, kind of like what a lot of people were saying. Um, seriously, there's a lot of fun stuff going on um, within the university. A lot of stuff worth getting involved in. And, and whenever we market these things, um, love seeing you guys show up to them. Love seeing you guys just be active students participating because I know we're kind of in an era where it's a bit hard to get students to be very active and participate in a lot of stuff. So I really want to thank you guys for that. Um, but that's pretty much I have everything I have to say. Today's President's Day. If you see Jim Trussell, you know, you tell him what's up. Um, it's his day today. So. Yeah. Robo Smith, I didn't know if you had anything you wanted to add or not. Uh, not, not so much. Uh, it's great hearing all the things that you guys are doing. Um, I agree. Get involved in taking the Noel uh, Levitt survey. Um, I loved hearing that you guys are interested in hearing how Blackboard's going. What do you like? What don't you like? So I'm just interested in any, any way that uh, all of you guys can help us make the experience here at YSU better. Uh, have a have a great week and um, don't worry about the snow. <laughs> Okay. Hey. So at this time, I will favorably put a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Second.